This screencast will serve as an introduction to RossBridge from a client's perspective. That is, making full use of Ross through RossBridge from a limited environment like uh, an Arduino or some other microcontroller, or perhaps from the command line as we'll be showing today. There are notes for this video in a paste bin, the link to which is in the description. And I recommend that you watch this video inside a YouTube player if possible because I make use of annotations. So to get started, we're just going to assume that you only have ROS installed. So let's go ahead and start up a ROS core. And now obviously we need to install ROS Bridge itself. Luckily that's pretty easy because it's available from the exact same repos as ROS itself. And it's part of the Brown Remote Lab stack. So once that's installed, let's make ourselves a little area to work in. And then we'll launch ROS Bridge itself. Now normally you would want to have this in a separate window so you could see all the output about different clients connecting and error messages and all that. But it's a bit chatty, so we're just going to ignore everything it says for right now. We'll just launch ROS Bridge. So it's up and running and it's by default connected to port 9090 and is accepting two kinds of connections. WebSocket connections and raw socket connections, i.e. normal socket connections. Uh, so what we're going to do is do the normal or raw socket connection. So to get ready to do that, let's make ourselves a FIFO. And then we'll just access that using that cat. So very raw way of doing this. And notice I'm connecting to 9090. And we're now connected to Ross Bridge, but of course it doesn't know which kind of connection we're going to have. We need to do the proper handshake. And in the case of the raw connection, that is as follows. So here it's simply the word raw followed by two Windows style uh, new lines, carriage return new line. And notice I've used the dash in on the echo. That's to suppress echo's natural tendency to add an extra new line. That won't be important in any other of the examples, but it is important for the handshake. So hit enter. That's now sent to that socket. So we have now told Ross that we want a raw connection. So what can we do? Well, there's two things you can use Ross Bridge to do. And they actually cover everything you will want to do in Ross. The first is to publish to a topic and the second is to access a service. Now RossBridge does a pretty nice thing in that if you publish to a topic that doesn't yet exist, it will establish that topic. So let's actually use the existing command line tool to see the topics that are already listed. So there's just RossOut and then some aggregated version of RossOut. So let's establish a topic using RossBridge. So RossBridge messages are just JSON objects. And the only thing special about the protocol is that they're padded or they're wrapped in a 0 byte and a 255 byte. Everything else about them is a normal JSON object that's ASCII encoded. They have three fields in the case of publishing, a receiver, a message, and a type. The receiver is just the destination in terms of the topic, so we'll establish a test. The message is the payload object, which we'll get to in a second. And then, of course, the type is the type that you want that topic to have. Now, we'll start really simple. If you've used ROS before, you're probably familiar with the standard messages string type. That's just an object that has a single field called data that contains a string. And as you'll see, sending one of those is very easy. We just use the JSON equivalent. So we have a data field, and then it has a string value. So if I now hit enter and send that to the socket and run ROS topic list again, you see the test has been established. Now there's a slightly nicer syntax if you want to establish a lot of these at once without publishing anything. If maybe you think there might be listeners already, you can publish an empty JSON object or you can publish an empty array. Um, so let's go ahead and create a test2 topic that's of the same type by publishing an empty array. So you see that there's now a test two. Okay, so what about subscribing and doing all this other stuff we might want to do? Well, that's done 
via service calls because what Rossbridge does is it establishes a lot of the things that you would do with an API in a programming language through services. So really all you need to know is how to call a service. Well, how do you call a service? It's a very similar syntax to how you publish. Again, it's a JSON object. And again, it's wrapped in a 0 and a 255. And again, it has actually a receiver and a message uh, field. There's no type field. But the receiver field is now the name of the service. And the message field is now an array that contains the in-order parameters for that uh, service. So in our case, we want to make use of Ross Bridges provided subscribe service. And it takes three arguments, the third being optional. Argument one is the name of the topic we want to subscribe to. Argument two is a, is a timing threshold used for throttling. And what this is, is it's a number of milliseconds. So if I gave it a thousand, what this would mean is that at most I would get a message of this type or from this topic once a second, right? And if I said the 500, I'd get one tw twice a second and so forth. So obviously zero means I would get them as fast as they're naturally published. But there's a special value I can give this, which is minus one, which means not only do I want them as fast as I can get them or as fast as they're published, but also I want Ross Bridge to, on my behalf, establish a queue so that I never miss a message. And this is just sort of my default that I like to use. So uh, the optional third parameter is if this test topic did not exist yet, we could, give enough, we could give the type that we expect it to be when it does get established here. And then we wouldn't need to wait for that topic to be published. But since that topic's already being published on or is already established, we just need the first two. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And we'll get a response back immediately from Rossbridge with an OK, saying that our subscription has gone through. Now notice the upside down question mark in the one half. What that is, is that we're seeing the 0 and the 255 as interpreted on the command line. So we send things to Rossbridge with wrapped in zeros and 255s, and we get them back to wrapped in zeros and 255s. Now notice that the 255 is on its own line, and that's because when we get things back from the server, there's an extra new line after the JSON object, and that's useful for different kinds of processing, which we'll cover perhaps in another video. So now we're subscribed to the test, and if I use the Ross Topic tool to publish to that, say the rate of one per second, you'll see that indeed I get Ross Bridge messages at the rate of one per second where the payload in the message is exactly what we'd expect. Now how do I unsubscribe? Again, Ross provides a special service unsubscribe, and in that case it only takes the topic itself, and now if I publish, nothing happens. Oh, that OK came through because it was the response to asking it to unsubscribe. Now there's a couple of other pseudo services. You can look all these up in the Ross.js documentation. I can, for instance, get a list of all the topics that are available and all the services that are available. And that really is all there is to writing a client in Ross Bridge. You just need to remember to wrap things in zeros and 255s and to pass ASCII encoded JSON that has the right kind of fields.